The little raptor stalks forward with purpose, each step timed and soft, as to not make a noise as it places its foot on the ground. His eyes are focused, staring forward, with the gleam all predators have when hunting, along with a spark of intelligence rarely seen in animals before. His target is a small mammal. Every time its ears flick and it looks around, he freezes and waits for it to drop its guard again. Once it does, the small bird-like dinosaur continues to close the distance. Soon he comes into striking range. The claws on his feet and at the end of each digit on his hands are ready for use. He can also use them as climbing aids to escape from larger raptors, such as his larger dromaeosaur relatives he shares his world with, who would look at him the same way he is looking at the little mammal. They might all have been raptors, but they were of a different kind and at different places in the food chain. But for a little dinosaur, the little raptor is a formidable hunter. And one day in the future he cannot even comprehend the idea of, or is capable of even imagining, he will be known as the Fire Thief Dromaeosaur. For now though, he continues to creep closer and closer to his prey. The little mammal is unaware that hungry eyes draw ever closer and closer to it. Each breath the raptor takes is timed. His bird-like body remains tense for the coming spring as he continues to creep closer towards the unobservant mammal, which merely munches on some roots and has lost all focus on its surroundings. A tiny lapse in awareness for either will determine how the next moment plays out, and if one lives or becomes a meal. Around the raptor, the noises of other creatures sound, but for the next few moments his world is focused on the little mammal, now merely a jumping distance away. Pyroraptor Olympus's hunt has come to this moment, and all he needs now is the perfect moment to pounce. He is still as he waits, nearly right next to the little mammal, not even a stray feather twitching. He is as still as the trees around him. The little mammal is hungry and does not look up. The little raptor pounces toward his prey. The little mammal is snatched up in its jaws so fast it can't even register the pain of the teeth or what has happened before it is all over. A single snap and swallow has determined the winner of this little game in nature's ever-continuing contest for survival. Though the mammal's lineage would be the one to win out in the long run, today the dinosaur has won and the mammal has lost. And as the sun sets on yet another day in Cretaceous era France some 72 million years ago, for this small pyroraptor, it has been a good one, and it goes to sleep, satisfied, with a full stomach. A truly rare treat for any carnivore. Tomorrow, the fast, furious, and harsh life of the Cretaceous will resume, but for now, he gets a small moment of time to relax. I love dinosaurs. Um, don't know what could hint that, but I do. And today... I'm very, very excited to talk to you about the Pyroraptor, the Fire Thief Dromaeosaur. This is long overdue, but I finally got my script edited together after a wall of writer's block. Pyroraptor Olympus is such an interesting little dromaeosaur. Yes, little. It wasn't as big as it was from Jurassic World Dominion. More on that later. Fossils of this animal were first found in southeastern France in 1992, and were described in 2000. This animal's name comes from how they were found. We discovered them after a forest fire revealed the fragmentary fossils, hence the name Fire Thief. In this video, we will cover the same topics we did in the Helicoprion video. The discovery of the animal, the, the description and the paleobiology of it, and the world it called home. Animals it would have interacted with or lived alongside of, and just some other fun facts about it. I cannot wait to cover this little raptor with you all. If you enjoy educational videos on paleontology, like and subscribe so that I know you want more of it. And if you like dinosaurs, check out some of my narrated stories read from my upcoming original novel. It's full of dinosaurs and other animals from throughout prehistory. Okay, let's get to Pyroraptor. 
The Fire Thief Duromiosaur. This video has been long delayed, but I'm very happy to finally get to share it with you all. Let's start with the discovery. So as I mentioned in the introduction, Pyroraptor was first discovered in southeastern France, in the Arc Basin and Provence specifically. It was described by two French paleontologists in 2000. The type species, and so far only species in the genus, was named Pyroraptor olympus, because the remains were found after a forest fire in 1992, as I mentioned, and its name is also derived from Mont Olympe, the mountain in Provence. At the foot of this mountain is where the animal's remains were on Earth. The holotype specimen, known as MNHNB0001, consists of only the second toe claw and the left foot. <sighs> Man, here we go again. We are just rocking with these fragmentary animals. We've done Acrocanthosaurus, Auroran, Gracepithecus, Helicoprion, Pyroraptor. Who's next, I wonder? Surely! Something with a full body we can exam- <sighs> Damn it. More fossils which have been associated with Pyroraptor have been found since the original discovery. We have five pedal digits, one manual digit, a piece of a metacarpal along with a right radius and some vertebrae, including a dorsal vertebra and a tail vertebra. These were all found in Spain at two different formations. Some teeth found in normal- Normal Spain. Normal Spain. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that in. That might make some people that might give some people a chuckle. Some teeth found in northern Spain. Northern normal Spain. I'm sorry, apparently North Spain is nor normal Spain. <laughs> okay, professional time. Some teeth found in northern Spain were also thought to be from Pyroraptor but a 2022 study revealed that this was not the case and that they in fact belong to a completely different variety of European dromaeosaurids. Dromaeosaur finds in France are rare. Heck, this applies to Europe as a whole. I believe the only other dromaeosaur from France is Veraraptor, which is also very fragmentary. Pyroraptor and Veraraptor did coexist though, so this has brought up some interesting debates on how they might have interacted. So there is so little information on Pyroraptor, we need more fossils to learn more, that we are just flying through this one. Let's move on now to the description of the animal. Pyroraptor, as I've mentioned, is a dromaeosaur. It was covered in feathers, very bird-like, and a predatory theropod dinosaur. Think of dromaeosaurs of similar size for context on what it might have looked like, again, such as its relatives, Microraptor. It possessed a 2.5 inch long and large curved claw on the second toe of each foot for predation. The same kind of claws you see on the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park and World. Basically all dromaeosaurs had these sickle claws on their toes. On a small dromaeosaur like Pyroraptor, these might have also been used for climbing. Pyroraptor had well-developed forelimbs like other dromaeosaurs. It is thought that Pyroraptor might have jumped onto the tops of backs of larger animals when hunting them, slicing into their sides with its claws. Now, as cool as the Pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion was, seriously, I love the red feathers, they were, they were light in a bland movie, it wasn't as pure of an animal as the movie made it out to be. You know how they said that those were pure dinosaurs in that movie? Well, they're lying. That thing in the movie was as tall as a human, more or less. And while there's some evidence the Pyroraptor might have been semi-aquatic, maybe, it was not as big as the movie showed it to be. Pyroraptor, pod, if you will, the fire thief, whatever you want to call it, was about this tall, actually. Look at that vicious little bird. Now, not all raptors were tiny. Look up the size of a Utah raptor if you don't want to sleep tonight. Pyroraptor, though, was. It was not big. It was even smaller than Velociraptor. Another feature of the Pyroraptor is that the two known teeth from it are actually curved backwards. Their rear margins have finer serrations, saw-like projections, the same kind of thing you see on shark teeth, than the front of the teeth do. We don't have any fossils of its tail, but it's theorized that it was long and thin 
and used to balance the weight of its body. So take a look at this family tree. As you see, all raptors can be traced back to a base which they branched off from. Pyroraptor, due to its very limited remains, has been called a wild card taxa. We don't really know where to put it exactly because we can't effectively compare it to other raptors. In a 2014 phylogeny on Microraptor, Pyroraptor was included, and as you can see, this is shown in the tree on screen. Now, a 2019 study, on the other hand, I'll fade to that take on the raptor family tree now, it showed Pyroraptor to be a Unalegenia. Now, what does that mean, you ask? Unalegenia is a subfamily of long snouted Paravian theropod dinosaurs. What is a Paravian dinosaur, you ask? Paravs are a group of theropods which originated during the Middle Jurassic period, which lasted from 174 to 163 million years ago, so around 90 to 100 million years before Pyroraptor even existed, and it includes the dromaeosaurs. There was also a 2005 study, which I feel is worth mentioning while we're on this topic. It suggested that some Laurasian dromaeosaurids, like Pyroraptor, could be considered part of the Gondwanian lineages, but the scant material from European forms prevented this idea from being tested at the time the study occurred. For a little context, Gondwana was a supercontinent which started to break up in the Jurassic, and Laurasia was the northern part of, of the Pangaea supercontinent, Gondwana being the southern part of it. Right. So in this section, we're going to be talking about the paleoecology of Pyroraptor and then what life was like in the companion age of the Cretaceous. First, the paleoecology. Now, what is paleoecology, you ask? Paleoecology is the ecology of fossil animals and plants. So what is ecology? Ecology is the branch of biology that deals with the relations of organisms to one another and their physical surroundings. Pyroraptor is known from the, oh dear, put the text on screen because I'm going to butcher this, the Argiles et Gris uh, Reptiles Formation. It's in southern France. During the Cretaceous, this area was land was part of the island landmass called Ibero Armorica. The landmass as a whole formed what is today southern France and northern Spain. So, on to the Companion Age of the Cretaceous. This age lasted from 83.6 to 72.1 million years ago. It was preceded by the Santonin Age and was followed by the Maastrichtian Age, which was actually the sixth and final age of the Cretaceous. The Companion Age saw a worldwide sea level rise, and many areas which had been coastlines were now covered by shallow seas due to the rising water. This was caused by a generally very warm climate. The crinoid species Marsupitus testunendaris, text on screen, went extinct during this age. Likewise, on the opposite side of that wheel, there was this was also the age where the ammonite genus, text on screen, Pachyrodiscus nubrigenicus. Sure first appears. During the Campanian Age, there was an evolutionary radiation event among dinosaurs. This is an increase in taxonomic diversity that is caused by elevated rates of speciation, which is when different populations evolve into different species. An example in this rise of species diversity can be seen in North America, where the number of known dinosaur genera, which is just the plural term for genus, rises from 4 at the base of the Companion to 48 in the upper part of the Companion Age. Some paleontologists have called this event the Companion Explosion. Nice. Nice to see dinosaurs were still going strong, even though we're in the home stretch for their time as rulers of the Earth. In fact, maybe we could, maybe we could call this the last Golden Age of the dinosaurs, because before the KT extinction, they were already on the decline. For example, looking at North America again, in the Maastrichtian stage, the number of North American dinosaur genera is 30% less than in the upper companion. It's 
So, looking at the bigger picture outside of Pyroraptor, what dinosaurs were alive at the same time? Well, during the Cretaceous, dinosaurs were at the most spread they'd ever been. Since they evolved when all land masses were connected, they were able to spread across the world. This is why the Cenozoic is so different with its animals. The land masses were never all connected. This is why Australia and Africa, for example, are so different from, from each other when it comes to animal life. No single group was able to spread everywhere. The dinosaurs just kind of evolved at the right time to spread everywhere. So, what were some of the companion age dinosaurs? Specifically, what ones coexisted with Pyroraptor? Well, thankfully, Wikipedia made this part really easy. They had a whole section of dinosaurs Pyroraptor coexisted with. I'm not going into much detail on these animals, so I am open to talk about them in my Cretaceous Fauna documentary, whenever I end up making that. So, I'm just going to explain what these animals were, if they were herbivores or carnivores, and what genus they belonged to, and so on. So I can keep the possibility open of covering some of them in the big project. So, what were some of the many, many animals Pyroraptor shared its world with? Now, these aren't all, but it's some. Y'all ready for some more hard-to-pronounce scientific names? Because we're going to rapid-fire them off here. Take good notes, class. There was Rhabdodon, which means fluted tooth. It was a genus of ornithopod dinosaur that lived in Europe approximately 70 to 66 million years ago, so right up to the KT extinction. Young Rhabdodon may have fallen prey to Pyroraptor. Modern studies have found Rhabdodon to be a basal member of the herbivorous Iguanodontia cloud of dinosaurs. So, next we have... What even is this? Zalmoxes. Alright, cool. This was an herbivorous dinosaur, which ate a diet of fibrous plants like soft shoots, horsetails, and ferns. This was also an ornithopod dinosaur, and it was a rather small bipedal genus. Next up is the crocodiliform, which lived in the companion and mastogen ages of the late Cretaceous, Allodapasuchus. This is a notable species because some place it as one of the earliest true crocodilians and one of the most common of the late Cretaceous crocodiles in Europe. The skull shape varies between species, there's several, but overall Allodapasuchus had a short, flattened, short-snouted, and rounded skull. This is actually a really interesting animal, and I'd love to talk about it more, but I'm not going to go into details for three reasons. This is a video about Pyroraptor, I'm just introducing some of the animals that lived alongside of, and my big Cretaceous project. I need 60 animals to talk about in that, and this might be one of them. If not, it'll get its own video. So moving on again. Here we have another animal Pyroraptor might have shared its world with, and it is... What? How do I even say this? Mustrozabaltsuchus buffetaluti. It means broaded rostrum crocodile. Another animal Pyroraptor would have seen in its world was Martinavis. Finally, simple name. These were actually birds. See, I didn't just play music with birds in it at the beginning of the video for no reason. Which existed in southern France and North America during the late Cretaceous. It has a few known or at least possible species, and it was originally found in the same formation I put on screen earlier. The Veraraptor I mentioned er earlier, of course, coexisted with Pyroraptor. This was another dromaeosaur, obviously. It also lived in France and is even more fragmentary than Pyroraptor, though some of its fossils resemble Dionychus, which is actually really interesting. One study considered this animal a sister taxon of Bambaraptor. There was also Archovenator in the same region as all these other animals at this time. It was a late Cretaceous genus of Abelisaurid theropod dinosaur. We have a nearly complete brain case of this animal, and though it is a bit shallow, it is similar in size to other carnivorous theropods like Carnotaurus. There's actually a decent amount of information on this dinosaur, so I might talk about it in the big video too. It does have only one described species in the genus as of now, but that one species we do have a lot of info about, so it could definitely get into that big project. Anyway, I think 
that's enough to get an idea of what animals Power Raptor would have dealt with in its life. There are also a few undescribed titanosaurids in the area as well, which is very interesting since they haven't been described. Hopefully that changes soon. It drives me up a wall when we have fossils of animals and then they just don't get described. Looking at you, Waukesha butterfly animal. So, since our fossils of Pyroraptor are so fragmentary, I can't really cover everything like I've done in the Helicoprion video and the Acrocanthosaurus video. You know, we don't have a lot of fossils, so we don't even know um, when or why Pyroraptor went extinct for sure. With all that being said, please tell me what you thought. I, uh, I always read comments to see what people think. I can do it in for my videos and what they think of the animals I talk about and that kind of stuff. And uh, tell me if you learned anything or if you have any topics you'd like to see me cover in the future. Uh, coming up next will be yet another video in my Ships Which Disappeared at Sea series. I got some really baffling mysteries lined up for this one, and I'm really excited to record it. I'm also going to finish up uh, Wave 4 of Narrations from my original book this week. If you haven't listened to them, please do. If you like uh, dinosaurs or prehistoric animals, you'll probably uh, enjoy them. It is absolutely full of them. Now, if you like this video, please go check out my other prehistoric documentaries. I've mentioned them, but I've talked about Helicoprion, the buzzsaw shark, Acrocanthosaurus, the high-spined theropod, Auroran, a mysterious hominid which might rewrite human evolution, and I've also talked about Anatosuchus, the adorable little duck crocodile from the Cretaceous. You know, these are all going to be linked in the description, and as I hinted earlier in the video, I'll be covering one of the scariest fish to ever live, the Dunkleosteus, in my next paleo topic. So I hope to see you all join me back on a trip for to the Devonian era uh, to cover the life of that fascinating animal very soon. But as I said before that, the next documentary topic is going to be part three of Ships Which Vanished at Sea. I really do have some interesting stories to tell you in that one, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Until then, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. In a 2014 phyology <sighs> tongue twister cannot speak it. In a 2014 phyology. Oh, hey.